What's going on YouTube? Cocoon Master here and today I'm going to be sharing my first impressions on this new MMORPG called Dragomon I mean, that's coming out. So originally this was going to be a first look but I decided to make this into a first impressions what I know so far and questions that I have kind of video. So right off the bat you log into Dragomon Hunter using its launcher which is something that area games is known for whereas other free-to-play MMOs usually have an in-game login screen. You can also use the Area Ignite application if that's what you fancy. Right now there are only two servers, Paradox and Aegis, each with their own five channels. At the time I recorded the in-game footage, that was on the 18th, just three days after closed beta launch. So, on the 19th, they added three more channels to both servers. After you choose a server and a channel, you will be prompted with a window asking you to set up a secondary password. This password may only consist of numbers and signs and can only be six characters long. No more, no less. Also, it will not let you type the password in. You'll have to click the buttons on your screen. And every time this window comes up, where the numbers and signs are placed, it's randomized. Personally, I like when games come with this feature, it's just another added sense of security. Just try not to forget what your password was. Continuing on, Dragomon Hunter has a selection of four classes, each with two different weapon types. You start out with your primary weapon, but once you hit level 20, you'll be able to use a different kind of weapon and use new abilities that go along with it. So first we have the Mercenary, which start out with a battle axe that could be then replaced into a great sword. They use plate armor, and looking at the diagram, they are well-rounded, favoring health, but not crowd control. Before I continue, I wanted to ask my viewers, what speed are they referring to? Is it movement speed, attack speed, or the cooldown on your abilities? My guess would be cooldown because the mage scored low on speed. Although I haven't played the mage in this game, mages are typically known to channel up their abilities to perform some pretty overpowered, flashy spells but the cleric scored the same on speed, so it's just kinda confusing to me. Maybe it is movement speed. Getting back on track, the mage starts out with a staff that you can then switch to a hunting horn later. Don't have much info on the hunting horn, but it doesn't look like the same hunting horns used in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Their preferred armor is cloth, they have amazing crowd control as well as AoE, but they have low speed and HP. Next, the cleric favor leather armor, start out with the hammer, and later learn to use the cestus. The cestus kind of reminds me of the wolverine claws that the ninjas would wear, like Rhea Hiobusa's and Zed's blades, just very much smaller. The cleric excels in HP but lack in speed. The AoE heal from the cleric is pretty good in my opinion. Lastly, we have the scout. They use leather armor, they start off using the dual blades, and then transition into using the rifle. Now, if it was up to me, I would have had the scout start off as an archer, evolve into using the rifle, create a rogue class, start off with the dual blades, and have them learn the cestus, which is what the cleric learns. And as for the cleric, the second item for them would probably be like a lance or something and they could give a lot of party buffs or something like that. But this is what they chose so maybe it'll make more sense to me when I've played them all. Anyways, the scout has a lot of burst damage and speed but not much HP and crowd control. On to the character customization. There's 14 hairstyles to choose from, 12 hair colors and 4 different voices. Were you expecting sliders and a nice color wheel? With some sculpting tools? Nah man, you're interested in the whole game. The graphics are anime inspired, and they're going for the cute look here. But honestly, it's not even a big deal. The monsters look pretty cool. On the face style tab, there are 10 types of eyes, 5 skin colors, and 10 eye colors. After you've created a name for your character, you move on to customize your companion. You have a choice of 5 ear styles, 6 fur colors, and 10 face styles. You also get to name your companion, but I wish they could have added a name generator. And although it doesn't matter what you name your companion since it doesn't check the availability, just make sure you're following the terms of service. These companions are called Hoplongs, and they have 9 different classes. Right here it says, Hopalongs have their own classes and skills and level up alongside players. 
They can even wear the same kind of armor and use the same weapons. But like players, a hopalong can only use weapons appropriate for its current class. Now that's pretty cool. It would be a hassle to buy or craft armor that's exclusive to them. But not only that, let's say you and your companions both have a battle axe. When you've upgraded, instead of selling the old one, you could just have your companion equip it. Now he or she just got even stronger. Now you're probably wondering, why is there 9 classes? Our characters only have 8 total. Well, while the Hopalongs can use any of the 8 weapons we can, they can use one weapon for two different classes. And that weapon is the Staff. And the classes are Mystic and Salamander. The cool thing about Hopalongs is that they're not limited to one class. They can change to whatever class they want, like a Mystic and then learning to become a Zealot. However, your first companion will always start with the Cleaver class. You can also get new Hopalongs if you choose to do so. Jumping into the story, you're trying out for the Falcon recruitment trials. They have you beat up a training dummy and then on to pounce on some fungi. But right after, a wyvern gets close to the training grounds and a gang of soldiers attempt to bring it down but don't stand a chance. So basically you just approach the wyvern, you show him your stuff and drops dead to the floor. An elite sees what you've accomplished, finds out you're a recruit and thinks you're more than qualified to be a falcon. So he enrolls you himself. After that point, it's pretty much meet this person, take this to that person, find this specific egg, hunt X amount of Dragomon, gather enough materials to crash so and so. Yeah, many of the quests I was given after that point weren't really story driven. Well, what do you expect? It's an MMORPG. Yeah. You're right. Many MMOs have you running around doing errands. You can also argue that even if this game didn't have a story, it would still be good. But what's great about this game is just by doing quests alone, you level up really quickly. This game does not feel grindy at all. Let's talk about the dialogue. It's solid. Whoever translated this game did an amazing job. I don't know how accurate the game has been translated, but as for spelling, punctuation, and grammar mistakes, I could not find one. If you've been around the MMO scene for as long as I have, then you know that there have been games that have been released with really poor English, and I just don't understand how they, they were able to become localized. And for those of you who don't enjoy reading, they were kind enough to include a skip button. The NPCs do voiceovers with the choice of English or Japanese, but not of the whole dialogue, just a greeting or a saying. Combat in Dragomon Hunter is a little different, but very easy to learn. Right clicking targets a monster, holding it down moves the camera, left clicking just like right clicking can also target a monster, but if you click on an area on the floor, it'll move you to that location. So neither clicks are used for attacking. Instead, you select a monster and you use one as your basic attack, which is considered an ability. If you wanted to, you can set up your left click as a basic attack ability in your options menu. In the game menu, click system, gameplay, and it should be under the combat section. Your other abilities will be from 2 and on, and you have the choice to swap them around to your liking. Another way of moving is by using your WASD keys, W and S for moving forwards and backwards, A and D for strafing left and right, your Q and E keys will rotate the camera. You can also combine your WASD keys with Q and E, so you won't have to use your mouse to control the camera. You can jump by pressing the spacebar, or double jump by pressing the spacebar twice. It's useful for getting out of harm's way or climbing an obstacle. But you can also use R to roll out of danger, which is probably a safer route. Or double tap any of the WASD keys. However, double clicking the left mouse will not work, which is for the better. Keep in mind that rolling and jumping will consume SP, which stand for skill points. Well, what about your abilities? What do they consume? My friend, in Dragoman Hunter there is no such thing as mana, energy, rage, or fury. Even your weapons and armor don't have any durability. So, you know, in my opinion, this game is looking really great. Dude, do you Dragomon die of old age? Well, I'm sorry that I have to be the one to tell you this, but yes, sadly they do, but it's okay. 
They told me that they go to a better place. It's called Dragomon Heaven. It's pure paradise. They love it there. Obvious lies, obvious. Next question. Did You're funny. <laughs> are there any skill trees in this game? Nope. Certain abilities are unlocked at certain levels, which doesn't bother me because I could spend like 3 hours looking at a skill tree, remain indecisive on which path I'd like to take, and just end up looking online for which one is the best, just like a filthy cheater. Another cool thing about quests that I forgot to mention is that you can accept multiple quests. Start one, complete it, and you're given the option to start a new one right away or go back to claim your rewards. If you choose to start a new one, the game will teleport you to the corresponding location of where the quest needs to be done, so completing all your quests go by quickly. What's the controller support like? Honestly, it's fantastic. It was very easy to set up my Xbox One controller. All you have to do is calibrate your gamepad. The game uses the PlayStation's controller layout, which makes sense because the developers are from Japan. And what you do is, you push the corresponding buttons that light up on the screen, which is a cinch. Anyone can do it. If you're using an Xbox controller, just remember that the D-pad and analog are switched. Since this is the way it's done, no controller should have a problem. Your Logitech controller should be able to work too. So let me tell you what the buttons do, using the PlayStation's DualShock format of course. Square, Triangle, Circle, and X, as well as your D-pad use abilities. The left analog stick moves your character around, but you won't be able to roll by double tapping the analog stick in any direction. You'll have to use your roll ability for that. The right analog stick moves the camera. L1 and R1 are the buttons you use to get to your other abilities. This won't be a problem for you if you've played the X-Men Legends games back in the day or DC Universe on a console. L2 switches between targets and R2 fixes the camera to where your hunter is facing. Select turns your auto lock off, but when I push select, it brings up the game menu. Start changes the mode of your character between battle and normal mode. Normal mode is mainly for towns, that way you won't have to grab your mouse to interact with NPCs. Just know that you can't shop with a controller, you'll still have to use your mouse for that. Same thing goes for crafting menus or the other kind of sort of menus. There's one button that the list did not mention, and that's R3, or rather pushing in the right analog stick. R3 zooms your camera in and out. But unlike the mouse scroll wheel, R3 can only zoom all the way in and all the way out. There's no in between. Now personally, I would have liked to use L2 and R2 to switch between skills. Well, Cocoon Master, why don't you just like, you know, switch L1 with L2 and R1 with R2? It can't be that hard. See, I already tried that. What happened was the abilities only work if you're standing still and the buttons have to be pushed for about a second. Summoning a mount did not work at all. I tried walking, standing, still, keeping the button pressed down, but nothing worked. I would have had to set the mount ability on an inner slot. But here's what's weird. Even though I tried to switch the R1 and R2 buttons, the game knew I was lying. Nah, cuz! You lying, cuz! That's not our two, cuz! Hmm... Well... R1 still acted like the button to use to get to the outer skills. Although the indicator wasn't showing that I was accessing my other abilities, they still worked. Even when I summoned my mount, and I didn't have to stand still and keep a button pressed. Tapping a button while holding R1 and moving around worked fine, with the annoying R2 camera fix it adopted of course. So that's everything I know about the game so far, and there's just more much depth in this game. For example, I didn't talk about professions like mining, crafting, fishing, cooking, and breeding. A ranch you can acquire for your Dragomon, which I have no idea how to use yet. Dungeons, PvP, guilds, marriage, skill masteries, and other things. So there you have it. This game to me is looking really phenomenal. It's an MMORPG that's free and not grindy, which is a good pair. You can collect 100% of the Dragomon excluding the ones that are from Founder Packs. But they don't show up in the Dragomon archives, so reaching 100% is achievable. 
I just ask that they fix the little controller problem and to not let us consume our health pots when we have full health. Well, thanks YouTube for sticking around for this beefy video. I appreciate your eyes and ears. You guys have a good one. L1 and R1 are the buttons you use to get are the button